before I go, I couldn't leave you without giving a few more updates on some of our most anticipated upcoming films. In January, we'll begin filming Thor, Love and Thunder with director Taika Waititi and Chris Hemsworth, Natalie Portman and Tessa Thompson returning. And I'm pleased to confirm that Academy Award winning actor Christian Bale is playing the villain, Gore the God Butcher. Thor, Love and Thunder releases in theaters on May 6, 2022. Happy New Year, everyone. This is going to be my new Marvel Thor 4 video. Obviously, they dropped that teaser back during that big Kevin Feige presentation. They also made some special announcements in the past couple of weeks. It'll also be crossing over with the Loki episodes, which we're going to see in May. I will be doing episode videos for all that stuff, including the WandaVision episodes that start next week. So be sure to subscribe to get all those if you're brand new to my channel. We're also doing a giveaway for Disney Plus subscriptions. All you have to do to enter is just be a subscriber and leave all your predictions for Thor 4 on the video. Taika Waititi released a whole bunch of teasers and early concept art talking about the story during 2020 and the lockdown period, so I'll include some of that in the video too. There was even the funny Iron Man scene that he quote unquote accidentally leaked, but that was meant to be a big joke. Iron Man himself is not in the movie. There was just a joke page that he left in frame during the live stream, just enough for people to see what was on the page. And during the script, there was a bunch of really terrible dialogue about Thor running into a version of Iron Man, seeing that he had survived the snap. But obviously that was just meant to be a joke. Iron Man is still supposed to be dead after the end of Avengers Endgame. Most of this video and the biggest thing obviously is Christian Bale being confirmed as Gore the God Butcher. I'm so happy that they confirmed my big theory because Gore is a really cool character and he's one of the few Marvel villains that's a big enough threat to Thor now that he's gotten all these big upgrades. Thor has been confirmed as a legit god in the MCU. He got his big Stormbreaker upgrade and he's in the middle of using Star-Lord's Bowflex to lose all that weight. Like you've seen Chris Hemsworth posting all those workout videos, Taika Waititi confirmed that we would not be doing Fat Thor anymore in the Thor movies. He's going to go back to being the swole version of Thor that you would expect to see. But the other big change that Kevin Feige announced that because they shuffled some of the Marvel Phase 4 movies, that also means that they changed some of the post credit scenes so that it all makes sense. All the post credit scenes that tease future films work in the right order now. So I will talk about some of the post credit scene changes during the video too. But just to talk about the biggest stuff first, obviously Christian Bale, Gore the God Butcher. If you haven't been reading the comics, the Gore storyline is all Jason Aaron. The reason why that's important for the other stuff that they're doing with the Thor 4 movie, the Jane Foster version of Thor, is because Jason Aaron also wrote the Mighty Thor storyline with Jane Foster's Thor. But the whole thing with Gore is that he basically goes around the Marvel Universe killing everyone that's a god. Not just the Thor characters, but anyone who can claim any sort of godhood on any level in the MCU. The reason why Gore hates gods so much is because he used to worship them. He was a very devout person. He prayed for deliverance from suffering and plight. He feels like they abandoned him because his family died. He's out for revenge. So he blames all the Marvel gods for being lazy, not doing their jobs, protecting their subjects, saying they don't care about us. The gods don't care about us, so they should all die. So in the MCU, during Avengers Infinity War, when Thanos snaps the Infinity Gauntlet, killing half of all life, Gore did not get snapped. He survived during that five year time span, but his family did get snapped. He feels like Thor, the other MCU gods, should have protected them from Thanos in the snap. They got into this a little bit with Eitri and the dwarves on Nivel Delir when he went to get Stormbreaker built. Peter Dinklage's character, Eitri, said that Thor was supposed to protect them from Thanos. You were supposed to protect us. They were attacked by Thanos when he forced them to create the Infinity Gauntlet when Loki was still pretending to be Odin when Thor was on walkabout. And as we learned, Loki really didn't do anything as King of Asgard. He just sat around building statues of himself, writing those bad plays about his life. So that's why Gore wants to kill Thor. He blames him for not rescuing them. Remember all the memes after Avengers Infinity War? Thor should have gone for the head. That's why Gore wants to get him. Then after the snap, when he should have been helping his people rebuild, helping the other people of the universe the way the other gods should have, Thor completely abandoned his post, like you see him sitting there getting super fat, playing Fortnite with Korg and Meek. The only thing he did during that period was just sass Noobmaster and drink a whole lot of beer. Then after Avengers Endgame, when they snap everyone back, Thor continues to shirk his responsibilities as a legit god in the MCU. He doesn't want to be King of Asgard, so he just screws off with the Guardians of the Galaxy for fun and adventure. So that's why Gore hates all Marvel gods and he's basically going around at the beginning of Thor 4 around the universe killing anyone that can claim any sort of godhood, even the lesser gods, even the major gods. 
That's why it's so relevant that the Guardians of the Galaxy are a big part of the movie. They're a much bigger part than I would have expected before, and most of the Guardians are showing up now, confirmed to be showing up on set because they're filming right now. You may have seen the video of Chris Pratt and Tom Holland spoiling his involvement in the movie. It was totally hilarious. I've got um, Guardians uh, coming up awesome. uh, next year, and I've got Thor. Uh, Thor. I'm going to go be in Thor in Australia. So I'll be traveling to Australia in about a week. And, um, oh, wait a minute. Did you just say you're going to be in Thor? Yeah. That's so crazy. Might, Did it? Am I not supposed I feel, to say that? I feel like no one knew that, bro. No, they knew that. They knew that. I think they knew that. No, they knew that. If they didn't, they know now. Oh, shit. Well, they know now. Um, <laughs> Chris Pratt doing his best to join the Spoiler Bros, Tom Holland and Mark Ruffalo. Star-Lord is technically also a god in the Marvel Universe, more of a demigod, actually, because he's half-god, the son of Ego the Living Planet, who literally called himself a god with a little g. Even though he lost his powers when Ego supposedly died, and he's not as powerful when he's not touching Ego's surface, Gore wouldn't care about any of those qualifiers. He'd just say, you're a god, you just made my list. So you have to imagine Peter Quill trying to dance his way out of that fight. And for those of you that are really hyped up about the Necro Sword, Taika Waititi said that they'd actually already borrowed some aspects of Gore the God Butcher's Necro Sword when they created the Hela character in Thor Ragnarok. They said that Hela's ability to manifest all those weapons, the blaze that just come out of nowhere, the giant spikes at the end of the movie when she's fighting Surtur, those were inspired visually by the look and the feel of Gore's Necro Sword. And I know because of the lore behind the Necro Sword and what Marvel did with that recently during the Donny Cates comics run, and all the Spider-Man 3, Spider-Verse, Multiverse Easter eggs it seems like we're getting in the confirmed Tom Holland, Venom movie crossover that they're building up to in the future, a lot of you are now asking if there's going to be some sort of Venom Easter eggs in their interpretation of gore in the Necro Sword. Because in the Marvel Universe now, the Necro Sword is basically the primal symbiote. It's like a supercharged version of the Venom symbiote. I think at some point eventually Sony would love to be able to build up to a Null storyline with the primal symbiotes inside the Venom spinoff movies. But the thing is, is that the Null character, just relative to Venom, is kind of like a Thanos Infinity Gauntlet level storyline. So they can't just go straight to that right away. There's still so much other story that they have to do first. And most of what Kevin Feige has said about Venom MCU crossover stuff is that it'll be Tom Holland's Spider-Man going to the Venom movie, not Venom coming to the MCU. So just depending on how they interpret Gore's Necro Sword during the movie, we'll see if there are any kind of smaller Venom Easter eggs, but obviously I'm not expecting Venom to show up anywhere during the movie. Remember the town Tonsburg where New Asgard is built? That's the same town from the flashback at the beginning of the first Thor movie where they were fighting the Frost Giants. It's also the town where Odin hid the Tesseract at the beginning of the first Captain America movie. It's like Odin's favorite town. Marvel wrote Thor into the Beowulf epic poem, and inside that town, Tonsberg, Norway, in ancient times, the Grendel creature attacks. Within the Marvel Universe, they reveal that the Grendel creature was just the primal symbiote inhabiting other creatures, other people. So it was basically Thor versus a version of Venom in ancient history. But because the movie's probably only going to be like two and a half hours long, I'm only expecting Thor 4 to do a Cliff's Notes version of any kind of big history like that, and obviously Gore's history as well. The reason why the Gore story is connected to what's happening in the Mighty Thor storyline is because of all the idea of multiple versions of Thor. During the Gore storyline, you have the main version of Thor teaming up with other versions of himself to defeat him just because he's not enough by himself to defeat Gore. The big difference though is that it's actually other versions of himself from other parts of the timeline, not from alternate universes. And the way the MCU is treating time travel in the multiverse is that they're all kind of lumping it together using the quantum realm. So time travel, alternate timelines, alternate realities, alternate dimensions, all kind of the same thing within the MCU. The Loki series that we're going to be getting episodes for in May after the Black Widow movie drops is going to flesh out more MCU time travel and the mechanics of these alternate timelines, alternate realities. The WandaVision episodes, which we're going to be getting really, really soon, is going to be the beginning of the multiverse storyline in Marvel Phase 4, Scarlet Witch sort of setting things off in a big way. But that series doesn't really get into time travel. That's more just about alternate realities. The reason why after Avengers Endgame, Gore is like the next big major Marvel villain, next Thanos level threat, is because his grand plan is to build a bomb that will kill all Marvel gods all across the MCU, all at the same time, all across time and space. 
So it's like a version of Thanos snapping the Infinity Gauntlet, killing a selected half of all life, except this time he's only killing the gods. But just talking about some of the Marvel Phase 4 post credit scenes, because Thor 4 is coming out right after Doctor Strange 2, I would expect a Doctor Strange 2 post credit scene with the Thor characters setting up the beginning of that movie. They did the exact same thing with the first Doctor Strange movie, so maybe they'll just have another funny moment like that. And because this version of Loki is also going to be in Thor 4, I would also expect a Loki post credit scene at the end of that series helping set up the beginning of Thor 4 as well. There was also a really big announcement about the future of the Loki series this morning, so that's probably going to be my next video. I'll try to post that by later tonight if I can work fast enough. And also, the very first episode of Marvel Legends is dropping, I believe, at midnight, so I will do a video for that tomorrow. That's going to be sort of a prequel to the WandaVision episodes. Those will also start next week as well. So just make sure you have alerts turned on for my channel so you don't miss any of those videos. And I'll name a giveaway winner when I post that new Loki video. Everyone click here for that really big WandaVision episode 1 scene and the X-Men stuff that they just posted. And click here for that really big Deadpool 3 Ryan Reynolds video that he just posted as well. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and Happy New Year.